Welcome back Metricoolers to another video in our Metricool tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be talking specifically about Facebook and everything that you can do for Facebook within Metricool. I'll take you through the steps of how to connect an account, how to see your Facebook analytics, and even some tips and tricks within the Metricool planner for posting to Facebook. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure to go ahead and keep on watching. <laughs> So like I said, today we are going to be talking everything there is to know about Facebook with Metricool. Before I get into the analytics and the planning and all the good stuff, I do really quickly want to touch on how to connect your Facebook account to Metricool. So you're going to want to make sure you're in the connections page. You'll go up to the right hand pane and click on connections. I'm already in the connections page, but you'll see here that I don't have anything connected. And you'll see with Facebook, you have the option to connect either a page or a group. It is important to distinguish that you cannot connect both. You need to choose one or the other. Once you distinguish which one you want, so for example, I wanna choose page, you're gonna hit on connect page. It's gonna take you to your account. If you're already logged in, you're just going to want to follow the prompts so that you can make that connection. Make sure that you hit authorize and it should connect the page. You can also do this similarly with a group, but make sure to follow all the instructions and that should get you nice and connected. So now that I have my page connected, you'll see that this is what it will look like when you have a connection under Facebook. So mine says Metricool the page and you are good to go to start looking at your Facebook analytics as well as looking at the planner and scheduling things out. So let's begin with analytics on Facebook. Let me quickly log back in. So now that we're talking about analytics on Facebook, I'm gonna wanna make sure to go into the Facebook tab. So as you can see, I'm already clicked into it. And up here, you're going to see different sections for the analytics. So you can do page overview, demographics, clicks on page, posts, reels, and even competitors. Yes, you can do competitors with Facebook, which is really great. You can also choose a time frame. For the example, I'm going to do the last 30 days since that's a pretty good time frame to show some examples, but of course you can customize this to how you please. So once you start looking into your analytics, you'll see here that you can see in page overview the growth. So these are things like your likes, your followers, impressions, page visits, and posts. Now here you can see that some of these metrics are toggled off. This is actually going to change up your graphs. So if I were to turn all of these on, as you can see, this changes what your graph looks like. So this is really nice because if let's say you only really care about your impressions for this period, you can toggle everything off and just see your impressions over that period of the 30 days, making it super customizable to you. And then down here, we'll go to see a little bit more of your daily likes, your likes per post. You can also see a balance of likes. So if you've lost any likes, how many posts you've done, the posts that have been viewed in a period. So you can see those impressions, reactions, clicks, and this toggling on and off goes across the board. And you'll see that if you toggle them all off, it'll tell you to at least select one metric. So moving on, we can go into demographics, which shows the gender distribution, as well as your age. You can also see this in a nice table and you can see, you know, what ages you're hitting, what gender you're hitting, and as well as the followers by the country and followers by the city that would populate in here. Then we continue going down and you can see the clicks on the page. So these are if your website has been clicked, your page visits, as well as an overview of the posts published in the specific period. So these are posts that were published between the last 30 days, like I have specified. So it'll give you engagement, interactions, your average reach per post, your impressions, and then we'll continue on and you can see types of content. So this is if it's a video, maybe if it's an image, if you've done events, an album, like a photo album or even links. And then you can also see the difference between your organic and promoted impressions. We'll continue scrolling and this is where you get your list of posts. So this is really nice because you can actually pick how many rows you wanna see. So let's say I wanna see my last 25 posts. I can toggle on that 25 rows and I will get my last 25 posts to see those specific metrics. So here you can see the reactions, comments, shares, clicks, link clicks, impressions. So it really breaks down each specific post you did 
you'll want to make sure this is all toggled on in the column section. We also give you the option to download it as a CSV file, which is really nice. And once you are looking at your post, you'll see that you'll have a couple of more options. So you can click on view and this is going to take you directly to your post, which is really nice if you want to look at the post in whole. You also have the option to boost, and this is really nice as well because you can just boost a post directly to Facebook. Facebook just will have to complete that revision, but you can just put how much you want to spend and put the accept, and that makes boosting super simple. You can also click on more, which is going to actually show you your entire caption, which is really nice as well because let's say you want to repurpose some content. You can take this caption, tweak it a little bit, and repurpose it later on down the road if there is a post in specific that did really well on Facebook. We really enjoy this more option. You can just click that copy to clipboard and it makes it super simple in that regard as well. It also gives you the content type. So as you can see here, this is a video, this is the image, this is a album, which would be a carousel on Facebook. But we really do break down everything that you need to see by this list of posts, which is always a great place to start, especially if you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed with those analytics. But if we keep moving down, we're going to go to Reels now. So Reels is also great because you can post Reels on Facebook and you can auto-publish them and schedule them out. So here you're going to get an organic summary of your Reels so you can see the average reach, your video views, how many Reels you have published in that period. You can also see interaction, so how many likes you've gotten, the comments over the past 30 days, and you can also see that list of reels. So similar to the list of posts, you're going to have all of that information of video views, reach, likes, comments, engagement, and as you can see, you can even toggle on total time watched and average time watched and then just scroll on over. You also have that same option to view it directly in Facebook and you also have the more option which is going to give you that caption and you can go ahead and copy that to your clipboard. Again, making it super easy for you to repurpose. And you can do similar to this where you can toggle on how many rows you want to see to give you some more options of if you want to see more posts or less posts. Then if we scroll down to the very last section, this is going to be our competitor analysis section and this is a wonderful section to obviously fine tune your strategy, but also it's great because you can look at this in the free account and in our premium accounts. You can add up to five competitors on the free account and then it'll go up from there when you bump up to our premium accounts. But with the list of competitors, it's super easy to do this. You just have to add your competitor. Um, you just have to type in their name. So for example, let's say we wanted to look up Puma. Let's say Puma was one of our competitors. So you can type in Puma and pick the Facebook page that you want. So I'm just going to hit Puma there and hit add. And then from there, it's going to gather in all of their information and populate it in. It might take a few minutes, of course, as you're adding in all that new info. But again, you can add multiple competitors and you can see what's working for them, what's not. You can maybe take a little bit of inspiration and add your own flair to it. There are many different ways to do competitor analysis, but now you can see that Puma has populated. So I can actually click out into the actual Puma page. I can click on more stats, which is going to give me even more statistics. So it'll give me like their growth over a period of time, their interactions, a list of their posts, and I can see which ones are their most popular, as well as the engagement, the shares, and the comments. And then it'll also show you that here in this nice little breakdown. You can also, again, make sure that all of these things are toggled on. Or if there's a metric that you specifically only want to see, you can customize that as well. And it's really great, too, because you can also download this information to a CSV file as well. If you maybe decide you want to switch out some competitors, you can always just hit this and it'll delete it all and all the data that you just collected. But you can add multiples. So let's say we wanted to add Nike. We can also look up Nike and add that and, you know, do some comparisons, some contrasting and see what information we want to take to better our own strategies. But this is a really great way to try to up that Facebook marketing and make sure that your, you know, your content is doing well on Facebook. Okay, so we're going to move on now to the planner feature so that I can show you some of the really great capabilities that you can schedule out to in Facebook. So I am just going to give a quick example. So this is our planner page, obviously, and I have talked about it in previous videos before, but our best times feature is free and Facebook is a part of it. So if you go into the best times, you can click on Facebook and it's going to give you a gradient from the best time to post to the least or to the worst time to post. So obviously the darker is better, 
when it's white, it's like the worst time to post. And you can also toggle on the percentage of your active followers. So this is just going to give you a little bit more detail into when the better times are to post. So I actually like to toggle this on because it does give me those exact percentages. And I am going to only select Facebook posts so that you can see those percentages better. So you can see here that maybe I would want to post on the 90% on Saturday. So that's a great way for you to choose and decide when you want to do those Facebook posts. So let's say I wanted to actually schedule something out. So let's say I did want to post something on that 90% on this day on Saturday. So I'd click there and I would make sure that Facebook is toggled on. So one really great thing is not only can you do a Facebook post, but you can also do a Facebook reel, making it super customizable for whatever type of content you're trying to post. So I am going to go ahead and upload an image. You can also upload a video. So here I have an image that I can upload. So I'll go ahead and click that. And there is my Facebook image. You can add multiple images if you'd like, and it would create like a Facebook album. You can just do one single image. You can also upload a reel. So I will show you how to do that as well. So if I wanted to upload a reel, I would upload that and then change this to reel. And you'll see here that the preview changes depending on what type of content you're trying to post out. So this specific content is about scheduling Instagram stories. So I can put scheduling Instagram stories is here. Make sure to try it out on Metricool. And then, you know, you can add your hashtags if you'd like. So you could do IG stories, IG reels, marketing updates, whatever hashtags that you would like to include. So this is an example of how you could do a reel um, similar. You could do a post in a similar fashion. But down here, you're going to have a character count and you can even add a first comment. So the first comment is going to serve if you want to add a link. Maybe you want to ask a question, any additional information. You can add that first comment on Facebook. And of course, you know, we have our emojis. You can also edit your video if you need to that would be found right here in the three dots if you needed to do a quick edit you can do that you can also edit with a photo as well so you can also make all of those customizations as you'd like so if i wanted to do the post i would toggle back to the post hit add image let's add this one for example so this is obviously different so we would modify the caption to whatever the post was about but similar fashion, you could do the first comment if you say wanted to add a link to a blog post or to your website. However, wherever you want to direct traffic to, that is a great place to put it. You can also add a location for Facebook. You can add in a UTM link if you are driving traffic somewhere. And, you know, you could even go ahead and use our text AI generator. There are so many things that you could do for Facebook posts, but that is kind of a general overview of the scheduling that you can do. We also have Facebook presets, which is really just if you want to boost the post. So similar to how I showed you in the analytics section, boosting is also really simple. I would turn it on, pick the amount, and then I would be good to go. But that is a quick and simple overview of how to post on Facebook. And like I said before, it's really easy to do posts and to do reels. So just to give you another example, I'm going to show you this post right here because it is all nice and prepped and ready to go to Facebook. So this is a Facebook post. It's actually going to appear as a Facebook album since I have two photos, but I have a nice caption scheduled out. I have a first comment, which has a link to where I'm trying to drive traffic to. I don't have any pre Facebook presets set, but that's okay. And this is similar to what a Facebook post would look like once scheduled out with Metricool. One other quick thing I did want to touch on with Facebook posting is that if you don't have an image or a video, you can use our stock images or stock video section that will work with Facebook posts as well as our gifts gallery. So that is another option there. The other thing that I do want to touch on is you can actually do Facebook ads directly within Metricool. So I'm going to go into the ad section and I won't go super in depth, but I did just want to point out that you can do Facebook ads. We do have a video that is completely dedicated to doing Facebook ads or ads in general in Metricool. So make sure to check that out in our Metricool tutorial, but you would go in here to ads and you would make sure that your Facebook ads account is connected. And you know, you can go into create campaign and create that Facebook ads campaign. This is again outlined in a separate video, but 
it is another great functionality to add to our Facebook capabilities. And that's going to be Facebook with Metrical. We hope that you learned something new today. If this is your first time tuning in, make sure that you go back and watch all the other videos in our Metrical tutorial. And don't forget to use the code try free to try 30 days free of any of our premium plans. I will see you in the next one. Have the best day, Metricalers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.